Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y and this is Econometrics. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a regression table in Stata using the eTable command. I'm using Stata 18 in this video. Older versions of Stata did not have a built-in table command, and so we used user-made packages. But in Stata 17 and later, we have a built-in method for making tables. eTable has a lot of different options to it, and we're going to just get started with it today. I'm just going to show you how to make a fairly basic table. First thing I want to mention is, if you want to see all of the options available to making a table, you can use the help command. This is going to pull up your manual for eTable, and you can see all the different options that we have here. To show this, I have some data from the current population survey, the CPS, loaded up. We're going to estimate some Mincer equations here. So I'm going to first run a regression of wage on education. In this data set, education is years of completed education, and wage is an hourly wage. Once we run a regression, then we're going to want to save the results. To do that, we're going to use estimates, store, and then you come up with whatever name you want for these estimates. I'm going to call this reg1. You can call it whatever you want. Once I've done that, you can see that the saved estimates have appeared over here in the variables pane. I'm going to go ahead and run another regression of wage on education and experience, and then go ahead and store those as well. Make sure you come up with a new name for that. I'll call it reg2. Again, you can call it whatever you want. You can see that's popped up over here. You can keep going and run as many regressions as you want, storing them each time. And then once you're ready to create the table, we will use the eTable command. Pretty much everything we want to do is going to be in the options. So we have a comma. The first thing we need to do is put in estimates, and this is where you give a list of the estimates that you want in your table. So we're going to put in both reg1 and reg2. If we run that, we're going to get our table. This is a standard setup of a table that you would see in any kind of report or journal article. It allows us to conveniently compare how the coefficients have changed for any of the variables from model to model. So for example, you can see that once we added in years of potential experience, then the estimate for years of schooling went up. By default, the table includes the dependent variable at the top of the column and also the number of observations down here, but we can customize all of that. To add some more information to this table, we can use the option mstat and then put something like r squared, and that's going to put the r squared in the bottom of the table. You'll notice that once we put in the r squared, the number of observations went away. If we want to get that back, we can put in another mstat and put in a capital N to make sure that we get that in our table. Number of observations is something that you probably always want to include. R squared, you might want to include, might not want to include, just depends on what you're trying to accomplish with these regressions. Note that eTable automatically includes the variable labels in the table instead of the name of the variables. A lot of times this is something you're going to want to do, but if your labels are a little bit cumbersome and you want to go back to the original variable names, you can do that by adding the option no variable label, and then we go back to just using education experience and then underscore constant instead of intercept. One more common thing that you might want to do is add stars for significance, and to do that we're going to add the label show stars. What this is going to do is give us one star for significance at the 5% level and two stars for statistical significance at the 1% level. We can also customize the star scheme by using the option stars. For example, we could adjust this to include the three most common significance levels, 10%, 5%, 1%. So let's put in 0.1 for 10% and give that one star in quotes. And then for 0.05 for 5%, two stars, and 0.01 for 1% and give that three stars. We now have three stars on a bunch of these estimates because they're all statistically significant at the 1% level. You also notice that we have a note at the bottom that explains that scheme and it's a good idea to include that when you put your table in a report. I would always recommend messing around with the table in Stata until you are happy with it and then we can go ahead and export that to Microsoft Word or LaTeX or whatever you're going to use. All we need to do for that is put in the option export and then 
name the file that you want to export as. I'll call this a video example dot docx. And since I have put it in as docx, it's going to automatically convert that into a Microsoft Word document. The file will be exported into your working directory. So if we put in the ls command, we can see that it now appears as a file inside my working directory. Let's go open that up. We can see video example is right here and I can load that up in Word. And once you're over in Word, you can do a little bit of fine tuning if you want, like changing this back into intercept, for example. The last thing I want to mention is if you decide that you need to make a change to your table after you've exported it, let's say we actually do want those variable labels, so let's take this out. I'll get an error because Stata will not let me overwrite the file that I already made. To do this, I'm going to need to add the option replace into export. Now, if I pull up video example, you will see that the labels are in the table now instead. That is the basics of using eTable to create a regression table. There's a lot more options that we haven't looked at here, but this will get us started. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.